it may not be ADHD. Hey guys, it's Jana, and today I'm finally going to make the video about what's going on with my son, Quinn. He is now 13, he just turned 13. I've told you guys that I'd be making this, but I've been very nervous and worried about doing it. <sighs> but here we go. So if you have found my channel because you are looking for more information about your loved one or yourself, um, my regular channel, my regular stuff is um, just mom stuff, you know, cleaning motivation, cooking here and there, family stuff. So if that's something that interests you, go ahead and hit subscribe if you're interested in an imperfect mother with imperfect children. <laughs> Like the rest of us, none of us are perfect. But let's dive on in and let you know what's going on with my Quinn man. I just wanna premise that I am not saying that the person you clicked this video for doesn't have ADHD. I'm not saying that ADHD doesn't exist. I'm not even saying that my son doesn't have ADHD. I'm just saying question everything. If you are questioning everything, it allows you to think outside the box that they're trying to put our kids in. It feels sometimes like they're just slapping this label on and moving on, right? So this is our story and our story only. And I just wanted to share this to help anybody who is questioning, who's wondering, who's thinking this doesn't quite fit. It kind of sounds right, but it's not exactly right because we know our kids. You know, we're the parents, we're the moms, we're the dads, the grandparents, the aunts, the uncles, the people who know this kid. Welcome to the outside of our box. So this is Quinn. He's my sweet pea. He is everything. He's 13 now and he has a little sister, Emma, and she is 11 now. Uh, she just turned 11 also. Two December babies. I messed up. Quinn's life has always been hard. I'm gonna cry, aren't I, already? Okay, even when he was a baby, he would always have ear infections. He would always have, um, he would always be sick. He was always sick. And you know, we treated ear infections and they would go away and we um, treated his colds and they would go away. Even from when he was little, I remember there was a Thanksgiving. My parents were up and he, I put him to bed and he just started screaming. I wanna rip my head off. I wanna rip my head off. I wanna rip my head off. So of course we went to our urgent care. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> And uh, we got antibiotics and cleared it up, right? A few years of ear infections off and on. Um, he did get tubes put in his ears and that seemed to relieve that. He hasn't had an ear infection since. At age six, he started having heart palpitations. So it's technically called super, oh boy, I'm gonna mess this up. Super ventricular tachycardia. So he had to wear a heart monitor uh, for, I think it was about a month. And then they finally caught one because what was happening is it would, you can see it, you can see it out of his chest and, um, and it was just so, it was so fast. So, um, they would usually just go away in a few minutes or whatever. So we weren't too worried about it at first, you know, he was running around or whatever, but then it started happening at rest. Um, we took him in. So his heart rate was, oh God, I don't even know, like like in the 170s, 160s. So he went by ambulance to the Phoenix Hospital here, or the Children's Hospital here. This was actually on one of Emma's birthdays. Happy birthday, we're in the ER. Um, they stopped his heart. They had to inject medicine into my child at six years old to stop his heart. So they gave him the heart monitor so they could catch it again and he did so good with it he did so good keeping it on he had to wear it at school so he was already the weirdo kid you know so then he had surgery so um his doctor was amazing this is how you do this when you get it down see there's a yellow thing right there you get up get this down do the same thing for the other one And then when I go to bed, I do this one, level up, <laughs> sorry, in the bed, that's on the pillow, well I'm not, but, and get that one, ta -da. <laughs> that was funny, okay, bye 
Bye-bye, stinky pants. <laughs> Silly. Okay, goodbye. That's all, folks. Okay, turn off the phone. And all they do is like, so super ventricular tachycardia is a misfire in your heart. So your heart ultimately has a couple areas or numerous areas that are, are not communicating well. So they're making the blood go in circles and it's not coming out. And you can live with this. A lot of people have this. Um, it's SVT is the short shortened version of it. Um, it's just that you cannot go very far away from anything, emergency, medical, anything. Um, driving can be an issue if it's frequent and all this stuff. So anyway, so what they do is they, they pinpoint these areas in your heart that are misfiring. So during the surgery, they set your heart off. However they do that. Magic. I don't know. And, uh, and they ablaze and burn off the areas that are misfiring. So they're scarred and they can't be used. So we did that. Thank God we had insurance. <laughs> so that was at age six. Okay, first heart surgery. Yes, I said first. So then at age seven, we started kind of noticing that he was not right. I don't, you know? I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. So he couldn't concentrate. He couldn't focus. He was kind of he's groggy all the time and just totally out of it. Unable to focus at school. Couldn't do his work. He was disruptive and all that good stuff. So his teacher, it was near the end of the year, second grade. Um, and his teacher said that maybe we should get him checked out. We thought about it, you know, maybe he's just a goofy kid, you know, we're goofy. I like Goofy. But then at Christmas time, I made a green velvet cake. Now, if any of you guys know, baking, red velvet, green velvet, whatever color velvet you want to do is a lot, a lot of food coloring. And food coloring sets off ADHD, doesn't it? We had a green velvet cake and he was berserko for like a week. So then I was like, all right, let's go get this kid checked out. So we went to the doctor and we got a referral for a specialist and we went and uh, we had to fill out this big long form, fill in the bubbles, you know, of how his, how he is, all of his uh, emotional, physical, all that stuff. And then they took him into a room and did some testing. I'm not quite sure exactly what it was. And they diagnosed him ADHD. And I was like, okay, well that explains that. We were never once uh, for medication, but it was the end of the school year. So I was like, you know what? Let's get the medication and we'll see what his teacher says. She knows him, she loves him. And I know that she would give us a good report, you know, good or bad. So we went ahead and jumped on board. We only had two weeks left of school. So we got him his meds. The first day I got a text from his teacher saying, oh my God, he finished his work. It's the first time ever on his own. So I was like, oh my God, case closed. We found the cure, <laughs> right? So we kept him on the meds uh, for the following school year. Never ever got a call from the teacher, not once. He just kind of floated through. Um, he wasn't himself, but he wasn't angry, he was functioning, he just lost that glow, that shine, that excitement, I guess. I don't know how to describe it. Jump forward to fourth grade. He was on the meds most of fourth grade. We took him off, like we never had him taking the meds like on the weekends or on school breaks, it was only for school. And he was having a really bad time on the meds. He was lashing out and freaking out and hating himself, hitting himself, scratching himself, wanting to run away, running to jump out the window. It was really scary stuff. I was starting to get really scared of him. <gasps> would you like would you like me to go get your um, multiplication table? Yes! Can you be nicer about that? 
Yes! Come on, bud. Actually, the next two are right. And then... The next one after that, it's going to be super simple. Come on. It was spring break, so we weren't taking the meds. And he was our sweet little man. Goofy. Our goofy, sweet little man. So I was like, you know what? This is ridiculous. I'm done. I'm done with the meds. So we went and talked to the doctor about taking him off and how happier and how much, you know, more involved he was and, and everything like that. And he just kind of was like, oh, well, wasn't he always kind of angry? Wasn't he always kind of mad? And I'm like, well, no, not really. Like, not like this, you know? Kid mad, not like I want to die mad. So then I got mad. Yeah, that's die. That's what I want to do. Please don't talk like that. Why? I'm a terrible person. You're not a terrible person. Yes, I am. I always have been. I just was pretending to be a nice person so you could just care about me. Honey, I care about you every day. No, you don't. So then he tried to push another prescription on us. He's like, okay, now this is brand new. So if the pharmacy doesn't know what it is, here's the rep's number and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, this dude was just in here kissing your butt and you're gonna push this pill on my kid. So yeah, we canceled every appointment after that. That really made me mad. And on top of it, they never called us. They never checked in on him. They didn't care. So then it was uh, coming into fifth grade and we went into school to meet the teachers and he had three teachers that year. And I swear to God, this woman, his teacher, his homeroom teacher was put there for him. So we explained everything that was going on with Quinn and uh, that we're not doing the med thing for the moment. So he's gonna not do his work. He's going to need a lot of extra prompting. He's going to need some help. And I have always been there. I will communicate with the teachers, you know, the whole thing. So his homeroom teacher who was placed there by God, I swear, took us to the side and said, have you heard of brain mapping? It's like, no. She's like, yeah, they scan your brain to see if you have some misfires or loose wires. I was like, hmm, that's really interesting. So of course, being the mom that I am, just consumed by this, I looked it all up, brain mapping, where to get it, what does it mean, what does it do, how does it work, blah, blah, blah. So I found a doctor an hour and a half away. This is partially why I had to move, guys, because we had to be closer to his doctors. We went up and did our brain mapping, and lo and behold, his brain's like completely flip-flopped. With this doctor, we did um, biofeedback, which was actually really, really cool. It, it's like this device that is on your head, and you're watching a screen. You can watch a Netflix, you can play games, you can whatever, but the screen will go dark if you're not actually focusing on it, according to your brain. So it's like exercising your brain. So that was way cool. I saw a lot of improvement with that. And then this doctor drew a whole bunch of labs. This kid has gotten so much blood sucked out of him. It's amazing. Excuse me. So he found Lyme disease. He found pandas, which a lot of people don't know about. A lot of doctors don't know about. And in fact, Lyme disease, a lot of doctors deny even exists which is stupid because every vet believes it exists and gives their dogs antibiotics, but they won't give it to their kids. It's weird. Pandas is pediatric, what is it? Pediatric autoimmune neuro, gosh, neuropsychiatric disorders associated with strep. <laughs> Thank goodness for the acronym. Okay, so pandas is caused by strep 
Now, most kids get strep, right? The sore throat with the white dots on their throat. But some kids, some people, if it gets past your blood-brain barrier, which is this little layer saving your brain, then it starts attacking your brain, which is what it's doing. It causes emotional disorders. It causes um, so many things. It causes things that look like ADHD, actually. Mood, mood changes, sadness, and depression. Um, uh, changes in motor skills, like his handwriting, used to be so good. And it just was declining and declining every year. I mean, how do you explain that? Uh, joint problems, all of that. So, so that made sense. I mean, his numbers are in the thousands. And they're supposed to be the strep numbers, sorry. Um, the strep labs are supposed to be in like 200 or less antibodies. His are in the thousands. He's being attacked. Um, and then the Lyme disease, uh, Lyme disease is actually very hard to diagnose because a lot of the labs, um, can't find it. It can lay dormant and can't be found, whatever, but we have taken the Lyme test, I think four times now, and every single one of them is positive. So Lyme disease is a whole other thing. Same, same type of symptoms, which is so insane that we have found all of these things. Um, attention deficit disorder, OCD, autism. Uh, chronic fatigue. He's always tired. It's ridiculous. Um, inflammation of the brain. Fibromyalgia. IBS. Lupus. Meningitis. Any psychiatric disorder. Depression. OCD. Bipolar disorder. Thyroid issues. Those were our two big diagnoses from this doctor. So like I said, we treated with brain mapping and, and biofeedback or neurofeedback. Neurofeedback. I'm sorry. Neurofeedback. Did I say biofeedback before? Sorry, my brain's all over the place. Ha ha ha, I must get it from Quinn. <laughs> oh, if you can't laugh about this stuff, you're gonna go insane. Okay, so we did a lot of treatment with him. Uh, we went through the Cowden's regimen. It's a bunch of magic potions is all I can say about it, like a bunch of herbals. Mind you, all of this stuff is out of pocket. So let me jump back. We were on the Dave Ramsey plan and paid off our old house, as, as you some of you guys know, my regular viewers. And uh, so we paid off our house on December 31st. Happy New Year. And then on January 3rd, we got all the diagnoses. God has a plan, guys. God has a plan. So all the treatments, more or less, with our mortgage payment every month. Um, so... Anyway, so we did a lot of supplements. We did the Cowden's um, supplements along with a lot of other vitamins. I mean, this kid just is enduring everything. Um, we did ozone IV therapy. That stuff is amazing, but it's not long lasting. Um, it didn't change his numbers. It didn't get him better. But he, he felt better like in between, you know, maybe for like three or four days. So we did that. We drove an hour and a half to do neurofeedback three times a week. And then when we finished that, we started the, the ozone therapy, IV therapy. And we would drive an hour and a half up to go get IVs. So, you know, he's missing school anyway. <laughs> Not like he's getting anything done. So at age 10, Quinn had another SVT, supraventricular tachycardia attack. So remember, he had his ablation when he was six. So four years later, he had another episode. So we went and saw the original doctor and he was baffled. It's like, wow, usually if I miss an area, it's like within a week or two, maybe a month, not four years later. And by that time we were diagnosed ADHD and pondering everything. Um, so anyway, so he had the heart surgery again. So then we had the follow-up with the cardiologist a year after his ablation, and we asked him, could this have been caused by Lyme disease? And he pretty much laughed us out of the room. Now that pissed me off, because one of the side effects of Lyme disease is heart palpitations. 
laughed us out of the room. That's the scariest part about all of this stuff. You can't even trust your doctors. I mean, mama's got a gut. Y'all know that. And I'm just running with it because that's all I got. That's all I got. I'm not a doctor. Um, I've worked in the medical field, but I do not have a degree in anything medical. This just makes sense to me. And then I just started questioning again, right? He's getting better. The numbers aren't changing. We're pulling labs once a month. I look into finding another doctor that we can, can join our team. So I found a neurologist that specializes in pandas, because I don't know, I just felt like I needed to go into a different direction. So we found her amazing. She knows her stuff, for sure. So she's a neurologist. Sorry, I'm kind of bouncing around. I'm all over the place. So the first doctor that we saw was a naturopathic doctor. Awesome. Started us on our path. I will be forever grateful. So... We needed to move forward. Something just wasn't quite right. Thinking outside that box again. So I found a, a neurologist that specialized in pandas and we got in, um, I, I think it took a while, if I remember right. Um, at the time she took insurance, only one kind and it was our kind. And I was like, oh my God, thank God. Thank God, not only does she specialize in what's going on with my kid, they take our insurance because we've been paying out of pocket this entire time. So we went and saw her and she drew more labs than I have ever seen. We had so many labs, we had to do it in two sets, uh, two visits because it was like 48 vials of blood from my child. And it took about a month to get all the results. Okay, so she found the pan, or she confirmed the pandas. She confirmed the Lyme. She found mold toxicity. She found the MTHER gene, or as we like to call it, the mother effer gene mutation. Um, she found hypothyroidism, so his thyroid is messed up. She found West Nile virus. She found. Uh, SIRS, C-I-R-S, which is um, chronic inflammation response something, what is it? Chronic inflammatory response syndrome. So this kid's body is attacking itself. So his body is creating antibodies and thinks everything is wrong. Like everything, his food. It attacks his food, it attacks his brain. His brain is swollen, so we did an MRI. His brain is swollen everywhere, except for one part. So no wonder, no wonder he can't concentrate, no wonder he can't relax, no wonder he can't sleep, no wonder, no wonder, no wonder, no wonder. I mean, he has spots like all over his arm, just risen spots and everything. He was on antibiotics for about two years. Two years, antibiotics, didn't do anything, didn't change his numbers. He's on sleeping pills, well, natural, natural sleeping stuff. It doesn't do much, but I haven't really tried the hard-hitting prescription stuff either. Um, she also diagnosed him with leaky gut. That is a huge thing that a lot of people have. So leaky gut is, you know, our whole in digestion system has this barrier around it to keep any toxins out and to keep any toxins in from going out into your body. So if you have leaky gut in any 30 feet of all of your goodies on the inside, bad things from your food can go into your body. And the barrier is only one cell thick, so if anything breaks through that, all hell can break loose. So that's what's happening is that his body, his antibodies that your body naturally makes, is seeing these foreign things coming through the intestinal tract um, or digestion tract, wherever it may be, and saying, hey, that's foreign. Kick that thing's butt, right? So we got to fix that too. He also had um, allergy tests for food. This was interesting. We did it twice. Sounds stupid, right? So the first time it was actually included in one of the other tests that we did, I think it was a heavy metals 
urine test that we paid out the wazoo for, but they were running a special <laughs> that you could get a food allergy uh, test with it. And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? So we did that. And guess what he was allergic to? Everything he ate. Everything. Peanuts. Okay, I just mind you, before I list off all of this stuff, he's never had an outside uh, reaction to anything. No anaphylaxis, nothing, right? Okay, peanuts. Those kill people that are allergic to them. On his uh, lab, the line was past the red zone, okay? you think he would die if he smelled one. A peanut, off the chart. So peanuts, eggs, uh, wheat, wheat gluten, oats, all milk stuff, off the charts. Look. Peas. So, of course, I took him off all of that. So instead of bananas, he could have pineapple, right? So we just kind of replaced. And then we got another one. Months later, let's see, January of 19. And then we did this one July of 19. And guess what he was a, a allergic to? Everything that I supplemented everything with. Pineapples. Oh yeah, cashews instead of peanuts. Oh, chicken, because I gave him chicken instead of eggs. Almonds, because you know, no peanuts. So he had almond butter, he had cashew butter. That, oh, and watermelon. Yep, watermelon, because he couldn't have bananas, so I gave him pineapple and watermelon. So pineapple and watermelon were on the list again. Or, now. So what does that tell you about this child? Is he actually allergic to anything? No. His body's just attacking it. Which also told us, leaky gut. Because if his body's attacking it, it's getting into his body, isn't it? So he has leaky gut also. So that can cause all kinds of stuff too. The fatigue, uh, achiness, he does have joint pain. Um, he's not able to, the endurance is not there, sleepy. So his body is constantly fighting his body. Um, everything's made its way through the brain, blood barrier, um, she believes that the mold toxicity is in his brain. Now, she asked us, you know, when have we ever been exposed, right? So as far as the Lyme is concerned, I'm just assuming, I don't know, because we are in Arizona, so not that it's not here, it's everywhere. Don't let a doctor tell you that it's not somewhere, because we all travel, we all go places. It's not just in Connecticut, okay? Um... So what I assume is what happened is we went back to visit family in Ohio when he was almost two. I remember because he was a, still a lap baby, but he was a chunky monkey. So I remember <laughs> trying to wrangle him in on the, on the flight. Um, but anyway, we were there for a while, went through the woods, went walking and, and hiking and stuff. So I only assume that that's when it happened, there was never the red bullseye that everybody talks about with Lyme disease. That actually only occurs, I think I read like 40% of the time, 60% of the time, one or the other, I, whichever. But either way, it doesn't always happen. So just because you didn't see it, I never saw a tick, anything. I mean, he was two, I was bathing him, I would have seen it. I'm assuming that he's had that since he was about two. And then we went to Disneyland I think he was like six and uh, we stayed in this hotel room. It was right across from Disneyland and it stank of bleach. It was the, it was the, ho it was the room that was right next to the laundry, the maid laundry. It reeked. We were all coughing and gagging and Quinn most of all, but he was fine. We were all fine outside of the room. So that in combination of having the MTHER gene, I'm assuming, let it take over his body. So with the M MTHR gene mutation, it doesn't allow our bodies, from what I understand, it, it doesn't allow our bodies to 
fix itself as well as a normal um, gene would, I guess. So everything that he's ever had is still inside of him, ultimately. So with all of that, he has, what, one, two, three, four autoimmune diseases, and his body is completely attacking itself. So all in all, he's doing great. <laughs> He's doing really good. I mean, there are people with Lyme disease that can't even get out of bed. So I told his teachers, I was like, just be happy he's here. <laughs> School this year has not been working out very well. So when we had to do, when we were forced to do the online schooling, right? It was actually very eye-opening and I'm glad we did it. I may be the only parent out there that says that. Um, we've always toyed around with the idea of homeschool. Dear God, I didn't want to because we fight. We fight really bad. No, okay. Well, so number two, good. stop asking. Well, I can't write something. We just something. waste more time. I can't write something if you don't tell me what I'm supposed to do. Okay. You have a brain. So I don't. I know how to do it. I'm trying to teach you to do it. I know how to. She just assigns us random pieces of paper well, that we don't so need to learn. do. It's so you can learn, buddy. But... That was just the homework part. So he went to school every single day for his eight hours and he did nothing. He couldn't function. He didn't sleep enough. School started too early. He never got breaks. He, he couldn't fidget, he couldn't move. Um, I mean, with school, we, try, we tried the fidgets. We sent him off to school with fidgets. We sent him off to school. We could even bought like this revive thing, watch thing that would vibrate just as a reminder, like, hey, get back to work. Hey, get back to work. Hey, get that. Because that's pretty much what his teachers were doing. Hey, 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 hey. Like, constantly. It was, like, impossible in the classroom setting. But anyway, so this didn't work for him. Apparently, he was just, like, playing with it, the watch and all this stuff. So we sent it back. But that's okay. Anyway. So back to the online school. Worked out really well, actually. Um, it took a lot of my time. But that's okay. He's my kid. Um, I would sit with him, and ultimately we would mute the teachers, and I would teach him the thing, and he would do the work, and he got all A's and B's that first quarter. He hasn't had all A's and B's for a very long time. It was rough, and there was a big pile of work over there just waiting for him to do, and I think that that would stress him out, and that would shut him down, and that would be the end of it, and there were days that we didn't do anything. There were days that we punched through all kinds of stuff. He caught up on all of his social studies uh, warm-up questions every single day. He caught all of them up in one day. He's not stupid. Not even close. He just has to be okay that day. I was ultimately using the curriculum and being his teacher during the um, online school stuff. So once the online school stuff ended, we sent him to school. I was excited for him to go to the new school. We just moved over the summer, you know, make new friends and um, get to know his teachers and be around people. I was apprehensive because of all of his autoimmune diseases and with the corona thing going around, but you know what? He's on more vit he's on all the vitamins we should always be taking anyway. He's like the healthiest kiddo. He hardly ever gets sick. I think he just got a cold like a couple weeks ago. He was done with it in three days and he hasn't had a cold for years. It's kind of ironic. The sickest kid can't get sick. So I really started thinking, because he wasn't, he wasn't doing his work at school, and we're doing the same thing. So he's at school for eight hours, exhausted. He comes home with his backpack full of work to do. And I come knocking on his door. So he does school work from the day, the day, the moment he gets home from school. Then he has dinner. And then we do some more school work, and then he takes a bath if there's time. That's no way to do school. I mean, he hated school. He was already talking about dropping out. He's in the seventh grade. That's what I'm going to do now. I'm his teacher. We withdrew him from school. If it gets in the way of doing my YouTube videos, so be it. I might miss a few uploads here and there. Sorry, but gotta take care of my man. Because uh, the second quarter, when they did go back to school, 
He failed everything. He failed everything because he, the, the amount of work just, it just kept coming and he would be crying. He's like, mom, it just keeps coming. It won't stop. So that on its own will shut anybody down, right? So at least with the homeschool way, we can work at his pace. If he needs to sleep in or had a rough night, so be it. If he has a doctor's appointment, which happens a lot, so be it. It's not, it, great, moving on. We don't need to waste our eight hours a day to do all of that work at night. We'll just use the eight hours a day. And supposedly it'll be less than that, but we'll see how he functions. <laughs> I don't know. I'm looking forward to it. I'm really excited. So there may be some videos more about the homeschool part. So back to treatment. So as of this moment, we're on this stuff called Desbio. It is another magical concoction of, uh, of uh, vitamins and whatnot. So we're trying that. What is he taking? He's on like omega-3, vitamin C, vitamin D. Um, I got him on serotonin. Cucumin, which is turmeric. He's taking something for his thyroid. Oh, iodine. He's taking iodine for his thyroid. Probiotic. So he's still taking a lot of stuff, but as far as his stress level and his hate level and everything is gone now that the school stress is over. He's looking forward to the homeschool thing. Um, he helped me pick out the curriculum. I let him have some decisions. Um, I'm really excited that he's excited. So we did buy him a sauna. You guys have seen that in previous videos. Um, that just helps him relieve some of his toxins. He does not sweat. So his only outlets for getting rid of toxins is going to the bathroom. So we are still working on getting him to sweat. Um, the last few times that he's done it, he has been completely bone dry. He is in that thing at 140 or 130 degrees for 20 minutes. Bone dry. Could you imagine? He's not releasing anything. I think that's why he has all these like bumps on his arms and his legs because they're trying to come out but they can't. They're like trapped in his body. And then I actually got him a Rife machine. Now I don't know if you guys have heard of Rife. Uh, it's pretty far-fetched to be honest. And I'm very skeptical but I'll buy, I'll buy anything to help him. Um, so, Dr. Reif, way back in the 40s, I believe, maybe even the 20s, came up with this idea that we are all living on frequencies, right? We're all frequencies. Everything lives off of frequency. Fre frequency. <laughs> so this machine sends out frequencies to hunt and kill whatever is messing with you. I bought the machine. And the one thing that actually convinced me the most to do it is that the government shut it down all those years ago. He was on to something, right? Oh boy, that's a whole other can of worms. But uh, anyway, if you're interested, look into it. We got the Spooky 2 Rife Machine. It seems complicated, but it's not. And I don't know if it's working, but I'm running it anyway. He, he, like I said, he's just continually, slowly getting better. Or at least I think so. He doesn't want to hurt himself anymore. His numbers aren't getting that much better. I mean, they are. They're, they're getting a little bit better every time now. It's just very slow. So we are actually looking at, we need to get a, a sleep study done. So the doctor is working on getting that approved and finding a place for us to do that. And also IVIG which is a whole other treatment. It's very interesting if you want to look into it. When you have chronic autoimmune diseases and all the standard things aren't working, like the antibiotics we were on for a couple of years, all the tinures, tin, tinctures, tinctures that were taken, I call them magic potions, all the magic potions that we're taking, um, all the vitamins that we're taking, all the supplements, everything. It, everything isn't touching it then most of the time insurance approves um, IVIG. If they don't, it's expensive as hell, but it is what it is. So what IVIG is, is this is very interesting. Okay, so they make this IV 
from donors, from plasma donors. They separate the plasma from antibodies. Okay, we all have our own antibodies of whatever infections that we've already had, right? That's how we work. That's how vaccines work. You know, like we inject you with the antibodies so that you don't have to deal with the, the actual illness, right? What they do is from however many donors, could be thousands in one dose, they take antibodies for all kinds of things. So then you get the IV with the antibodies, and then all those antibodies are like, hey, what's up? I'm here. I'm here to fight for anything and everything. So then your actual immune system, his immune system that is overreacting to everything is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I guess I don't need to work so hard. Awesome. And they chill, like in layman's terms. That is not science -y whatsoever. <laughs> um, so I have seen great success with that, or I've heard of great success with that. So um, I'm nervous and excited to try that because, you know, the antibodies is part of our problem and we're just going to inject more into them. But the whole point of it is, is when you have an overactive immune system, it's telling your overactive immune system to chill. I got this. And then also it works in the same effect for underactive um, immunities, obviously, because then you're giving your body actual immunities that you need. So that'll be interesting. I've also talked to the doctor about getting a tonsillectomy. Um, I've seen great success with that, but that's also scary. The older you get, the worse it is, the more it hurts and all that stuff. And that's not a tried and true thing that that tonsillectomy can help. But it makes me question, back in the day, like my mom's day, every kid got a tonsillectomy before they started school. Why did we stop doing that? I just question, I question everything. Why did we stop doing that? Because now all I see is more kids having allergies, more kids having um, neuro disorders. I'm, I'm seeing, we're seeing more and more of these type of issues I don't know. It's just puzzling. I was talking to my mom and my aunt about it, and they're like, yeah, we had it. Yeah, we had it. It was like a rite of passage to go to school. You had to get your tonsils out and eat ice cream. As far as the strep is concerned, um, I know he had a lot of ear infections and stuff, but he was never diagnosed strep ever. So even if your kid wasn't diagnosed strep in his past or her past, check it anyway. You never know. I mean, these kids are, are strong, man. Like, Quinn only complains when it's really bad, you know? So maybe he had strep and it just really wasn't that bad. Maybe he just said it's a th sore throat. Like, he'd, he'd never, even on that Thanksgiving with the ear infection, when he's screaming that he wants to take his head off, he didn't mention one word the whole entire day that his ear hurt or anything. He wasn't tugging at it. Nothing. If you can find a doctor who doesn't think you're crazy anyway. Speaking of doctors who think I'm crazy, <laughs> when we moved, we had to get a new PCP just to have a, a regular primary care physician. And so I told him everything that was going on with Quinn. He stared at me like I was a psycho. And I was like, I could tell that he was staring at me like a psycho. And I was like, okay, ultimately your job will be to give us antibiotics for an ear infection or to see us if anything not crazy happens because I have a cardiologist, I have an ENT, I have a neurologist, I have a psychologist, I have everybody. You are there just to be there because I have to do yearly checkups. And he agreed. It's really hard to be the mom that also has to be the doctor and try to figure out what's going on with your kid. It's sad. It's sad that we have to be the doctor. I'm more knowledgeable in all of these things that are happening to him than his actual doctor. And I get laughed out of a room by a cardiologist. All you could say is, well, that is a possibility, but we still had to fix it. Or his ADHD doctor who laughed. Isn't he always kind of angry? <laughs> yeah, he's always wanted to jump out the effing window. Yep, yep, that's my kid.
six years old, wanting to jump out a window. I'm not crazy. We're not crazy. You're not crazy. We're warriors. Just learn more. Question everything. Join Facebook groups before they all get shut down. So we have our good days and we have our bad days and um, we're all getting better. We're all learning on how to deal with Quinn and how to not trigger an onset of anything. Um, not that we just like straight up cater to the kiddo, you know, like he's, he's a good kid. He really is. He's loving, he's thoughtful and sometimes he's on a rage and he's not. But we just have to remember that he can't control he can't control it. His brain is a scrambled mess. All in all, an original diagnosis of ADHD churned into pandas, Lyme, mold toxicity, SIRS, and MTHER um, gene, and food allergies? Question mark? <laughs> question everything. I know a pill's a lot easier, and I sure did see a huge difference in him when we did it, but then I saw a huge negative difference too. That wasn't worth it. So question everything. Find a doctor that'll look at you like you're a sane person. Trust your gut. You know your kid. And we can do it. So thank you so much for watching. I don't know if you made it this far, but this is our story so far.